Hello, I'm Douglas, a Scot who lives in Japan. In this tutorial, I'd like to introduce you to one of the lesser known functions found in Boris Red, namely the import of subtitles and the subsequent manipulation of them. I work with Avid Media Composer on a PC, but you will find that the workflow I will describe can be very easily applied to any platform and NLE. Although Avid Media Composer has its own subtitle filter, I find that Boris Red gives me more flexibility and control over the appearance of the subtitles. Before bringing the subtitles into Boris Red, I have to time them and prepare them in advance. I tried various trials of programs like Bell Nui and Subtitle Workshop, as well as a few others. But they were either too advanced for my needs, and sometimes also the cost was too much for my budget. Being a Scot, of course I looked for a cheaper way. I'm sure there are many freeware applications which can do the job I wanted. However, I ended up using a program called iGisub. First, I wrote my text in Notepad, placing each row of subtitle on its own line. And then, in iGisub, I import that file by going to open subtitles. OK. The text file is brought into iGisub with the in and out times marked with zeros at the moment. I could now open the video with the track I want to add the subtitles to, but I find it usually is enough to only have the audio track open. So now I have the soundtrack, and down here, the subtitles. So I find the first section, and mark in, and out. Then I click on commit, which will send these values down to here. And there you have the first timings in place, and automatically I jump forward to the second subtitle. I mark the second part. Check. I need a short sequence with someone talking. And commit. And I continue like this all the way through my subtitles. Once I have Finish timing the subtitles. I go to File, Export Subtitles, Export, and under the type I choose Adobe Encore. And save. At this point, I'm asked to choose the frames per second, and it's very important that you choose the correct one. In my case, it's 29.970, and the file has been exported. If I open the saved file, you can see it looks like this. You'll probably notice something which may worry you. If you look at the first line of text here, You'll see it starts at 00 0.16. In the exported file, it starts at 00, 0 colon 0, 04. And this difference with the last two numbers is because these numbers are frames, whereas these numbers are an abbreviation of milliseconds. And this is the correct format you're going to need in Boris Red. Now, there are two other adjustments I have to make to the text before it's ready for importing. 
the line numbers will import into Boris Red up to and including 9. Double numbers from 10 and upwards will not import correctly. So I have to strip out these line numbers. And the easiest way is to double click here, press delete, double click on the second line, delete, third line, delete, fourth, delete. So now I've removed the line numbers. And finally, one other thing to do. I must add an extra line at the very beginning, which starts from absolute zero. So click on enter, move up here, and add space. And give this the same frame number as the first frame number of the next row. Space, but leave it blank. And save this again. And now we're ready to go over to Media Composer and Boris Red. As Media Composer was loading just now, I realized I had missed a step in the preparation of the text file. I have found that occasionally the last subtitle will come in at an entirely different size than the rest of the subtitles. And one way I found which can help prevent this is to enter another line and give it a start time code just slightly more than the end time code of the final subtitle. Space. and another space and enter. Now save it. Make sure the cursor is at the start, then add an extra video track, open the effect palette, go to Boris Red AVX2, drag the Boris Red filter down onto the new video track. Open the effect editor and launch the user interface. The first time you do this, I would suggest that you go up to Edit and open the project settings and check the frames per second. Make sure that they are correct for your project. OK. Remove the top video track. Go to File, Import, and Import Subtitle File. Double click on the subtitle file. I usually just accept the parameters which are already set up here, and OK. Once the subtitles are imported, you'll see these green markers which mark the first keyframe of each subtitle. If I move the playhead to the first subtitle, I may decide that I want a different style. So I can just go over here to the text style palette, color with borders, and we'll change it to this double click. And as I'm working on the top track, all the subtitles in this sequence should have been converted to the same style. It may happen when you do this for the first time, the font size may be rather large or too small. In that case, you go to the control panel here and scroll down. And here you can see the font name and the size. So you can globally change the size or the font here in the control panel. If I want to change the position of the subtitles, make sure you're on the top track again. Go to Position. And in this case, it would be the Y position I might want to adjust. Go to the green arrow. And let's drag it down just a little.
After you do that, make sure that you change the interpolation to constant. And I always play doubly safe and make sure I change all of the positions to constant. And from here, all that's left to do is go down and apply and render. And before you try and play back your subtitles, don't forget to activate the top track. In order to show you how I use VoiceThread to do subtitles, I need a short sequence with someone talking. And right at this very moment, I don't have one. So I decided to stick the camera on the tripod over there, point it at myself, and talk a little. In fact, I think probably I have talked enough. So I hope I can use this piece of footage now to add subtitles to. And it doesn't end there. If we go back to Boris Red, we can see that we have at our fingertips all of the controls for normal text, styles, size, fonts, etc. And if we twirl down here, you can see that each line of text is on its own track, and each track can be individually tailored as to font, font size, style, position, and so on. And the same with the timing. If you find that your timing was a little off when you created the subtitle file, you could adjust them here. I find that using Boris Red to import subtitles into Avid Media Composer gives me much more control and allows for much more creativity than any other method I know. In order to show you how I use Boris Red to do subtitles, I need a short sequence with someone talking. And right at this very moment, I don't have one. So I decided to stick the camera on the tripod over there point it at myself and talk a little. In fact, I think probably I have talked enough. So I hope I can use this piece of footage now to add subtitles to it.